and Paul got it. Yep, we're just about to start the meeting, uh, the presentation of um, Boas College and raising support for this work uh, up ahead for the next 12 months. So we're just going to let a few people come in. Do you want to do that? Let people in as they come. Mm -hmm. I'll just admit it, everyone. Let's keep an eye on them. Just... Praise the Lord. Hello. Hi. 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 Hello. Bless you all. Praise the Lord. God oh, bless you all. Thank you for coming. How are you, Claire? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, doing really good. I, I don't know how long I can do this for, but I'm happy to join in. <laughs> yep. yep. Thanks for coming to join. This yeah. will be going between, um, say, 50 minutes to an hour. So okay. uh, if it goes a little bit over, we'll let you know. But it's recorded, so <laughs> if you guys don't mind just for the simplest to go back over it and um, some people can't be on uh, tonight. So we decided that we're going to record it and send it to those ones that aren't, um, aren't on. So how are you, Ma Maya Mayara? Am I saying it correct? Yes, yes, correct. Hi, nice to meet you and Mayara. Thank you. Yep. Yes, thanks. thank you so much for inviting me. Yep, you're welcome. How did you hear about us? Yes, jo Joel sent me a message. Yep. Um, because yesterday I part yesterday no Saturday I participated in the immersion in yes. sunny su sunshine coast. Yes. Wow! Oh, you were there. Yes, yeah, so beautiful. Were you there? Uh, I personally wasn't. We didn't make it there. We just had quite a full weekend this weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, wow! We heard that uh, some great things there happening. Yeah, it was very beautiful. Yeah. yeah. How are you, Solomona? And I I don't I don't know. Ken um brother Kennedy Odondo. Am I saying it right? Yes, yes, it's brother Kennedy Odondo from oh. Kenya. From Kenya. From wow. Kenya. Bless you. Bless you. Uh, ah, yeah, all from uh, Kenya. Wow. <laughs> Good to meet you, brother uh, Kennedy Odondo. What a cool name. Are we saying it right? Yeah, I think we're saying it right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I just came across uh, uh, this Zoom meeting uh, on a social media on one of my friend, uh, yep. Joel. So I just feel that I should be part of this movement, that the Lord is doing great things over there. I just want to join and listen to great, uh, what the Lord is doing over there. Yes. Wow, well, welcome. Welcome to this evening. We appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, and Brother Joel's here. Solomon, I think I mentioned you, Mona. And um, John Valeski. How are you, John and Grant? Oh, there he is, John. Hi. Hi, John. Hello. Thank you. Welcome. Did we meet you the other night at the um? Yep. That political yeah. meeting. We had a political with, meeting. Um, yeah, the Rise Up Australia with Billy Bay. Yeah. yeah. Malcolm that, Roberts. That, yeah, and and Senator Roberts. Yeah, yeah. That's where yeah, well, that's where we met or briefly. I didn't realise it was you guys until as you were leaving, and I saw you. Mm. Otherwise, I would have come yeah. and said hello. Mm. Yeah. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Thank you for joining us. So, yeah, to, tonight we, we will um, we want to take the background. Yeah, All right, let me just like see. Fading in and out. Yeah, let's do that. We're just trying Lana, to. how are you going? Yeah, good, Salada. How are you? Yeah, good, brother. It's been a while. I miss your yeah, face. Has. <laughs> How's the family? Yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're downstairs eating dinner at the moment. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Wow, nice. How are the boys? Yeah, they're good. Growing up, getting yeah. bigger, getting too big for their boots sometimes. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. How How are you, Joel? Doing good. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've had a good, good productive day. Just took the uh, the kids out for a bike ride. I was inspired by, and I think somebody that, that uh, the CEO of Alpha actually uh, has her. Uh, she introduces her in the, herself in the neighborhood as the neighborhood chaplain. So I just made up some flyers and we we delivered them to all the houses. So we'll see if uh, get any text messages from it. Yeah. Oh. Praise the Lord. Well, welcome, um, Brother Joel. Maybe if you want to introduce yourself for like one minute and just share, you know, who you are and maybe yeah, just for other people that maybe have not met you. Some some have already met you, but just for one minute, uh, tell us who you are. And um, yeah, just before that, Joel's a big part of our lives. Yeah. Um, Joel is somebody that we, Joel and Candice and his team are people that we have been really, really blessed by and work closely with. Um um, yeah, so we're, yeah, we're really thankful for Joel and the Multiply Movement um, and mm. just the things that we've learned and the things that we're going to continue to learn um, as we keep moving ahead together. So, yeah, we've asked Joel, obviously, to come on and just to share because, um, yeah, he's a big part of what we're doing. So, mm. yeah, take it away, Joel. Yeah, amen. Awesome. That's great to see everyone. Uh, it is honestly a, a such a joy and a privilege um, to be running with um, Cornelio and Salata and learning from them. Um, we, I really believe that this it's a critical moment for this nation and for the nations of the world. I think that we're on the verge of really seeing the the last great end time harvest. Uh, there's been prophesied, prophecies about the billion soul harvest um, and it actually beginning in Australia and sending missionaries to all corners of the globe. But I also feel like that we are in the middle of a discipleship drought. Uh, it's a it's a crisis. The, the majority of Christians are not actively sharing their faith. And uh, and as a result, really, that the Great Commission, I think, has has been one of the most uh, disobeyed commands <laughs> in in the church and you know if 96 percent are not regularly sharing their faith even less are even making one disciple but i think that there's a tremendous opportunity right now to be able to see disciple making movements now there's disciple making movements that are breaking out all around the world with thousands millions of people coming to christ and i believe that it's australia's time and when i look around i've met a lot of people around the nation hello and welcome to today's episode talking I'm about sorry, parenting sorry. the holy spirit my, uh... Uh, but before we get... <laughs> hey man <laughs> <laughs> my wife has a podcast and it was um it's obviously just played in the background but yes i've looked across the landscape of australia and there's some wonderful things that are happening but i but in ter terms of all out of pretty much all of the people that I have met, uh, some of the absolute key leaders that are on the forefront of seeing people activated to begin to make disciples, to get out to the harvest, that are making disciples themselves and starting to multiply those dis disciples are really Cornelio and Salata. They are totally sold out for the kingdom. I know that they have a, a slideshow that they, they're going to present, which is just, it's a, it's mind-blowing what the Lord has been doing just over the last uh, period. And so in some of our discussions, <clears throat> uh, I know that uh, Cornelio has been running a painting business, and with, but with all of these opportunities that have been opening up, it's... Um, it, I know that it's it's been a wrestle. It's been a challenge. And like uh, I know that, that just over the last few weeks that, that you were traveling to Adelaide and, you know, just ministering to all these people, leading these people to Christ and then getting getting them baptized and then having to come straight back. Uh, and I've seen I've seen the, the wrestle with trying to navigate it with a painting business. And I feel like that they're very effective and they're very efficient with their time. But uh, you know, I, I think that when it comes to disciple making movements, that the majority of people are going to be bi bivocational, but there's also significant catalytic leaders that the Lord is raising up, um, I believe, to go full time. And uh, I, I've been introduced to, you know, some models of, of fundraising in the U.S. You know, Troy Cooper is one of my uh, mentors. Um, he is traveling the world but he he's able to come when he came over to Australia, it was on his own dime. He was self-supported. And he when he catalyzes movements in the harvest, he doesn't have to be relying on a local church. And so he has been able to get around 
a community of people that really believe in in what he's doing and so that they 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 have personal investors that are investing into them and so uh that was our in our discussion with uh Cornelio and Salata I was like you know I, I really think that there would be people that would see the fruit in uh, in in your life uh that would be willing to get behind you to be able to partner with you you know uh, we were just thinking talking about this last night that there was a study in in the US in 2010 and they took the entire church budget of the US divided by baptisms and that came down to 1.5 million dollars per baptism and so uh, that it's a the, the current way that the church is structured is not seeing a tremendous amount of new disciples being made but when i look at cornelio and salata i'm like this is such fruitful ground i think that we can't afford him to have to straddle another job, another business, but to be able to fully empower them to to really, you know, to to go and see many equipped. And it's not just they're not just making disciples; they're making disciples who are making disciples, and beginning to catalyze movements. So um, they had a meeting last night. It was really really exciting, and so I'm excited to get behind them. I know that they, uh, you know, I said, why don't you just put it out there to to a bunch of people? Why don't you just what you're believing for an annual thing, and just just really believe that the Lord will cover that. And so really, really excited about uh, partnering with them in that space. Beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Joel. Absolutely. So we, uh, we're we definitely not going to hold back from, um, you know, um, letting others know about our objectives and, um, you know, the mission that God has in, in, in store. And uh, I think this is the, the time and the, the season, the, um, you know, the, the atmosphere and the pressure that, that's around us, the uh, the way things are going, it's a it's a good time to start to shine, uh, you know, uh, what God is uh, wanting to do and, and speak about, mm. you know, speak about vision, speak about, you know, what, what are the dreams of God for us? You know, we need to lay down our own dreams down and, and allow God to, um, you know, to dream inside of us because his dreams are like probably a thousand times bigger than our own dreams. You know, I'm looking forward to, you know, fulfilling that dream. And uh, it requires, you know, a bunch of people who are committed uh, to partner together, to live this life together in these kingdom. It's not about a denomination, not about a membership. It's not about some type of, uh, you know, bent of, uh, you know, it's all about the kingdom of God. And uh, when we know it's about the kingdom, then we know the ecclesia is the ruling governmental authority, uh, you know, fulfilling the Great Commission, bringing change and legislating uh, to work and with, you know, with all the fivefolds. I really see a fivefold, uh, you know, um, working uh, up, up ahead. Uh, we, we, we have not seen as much, um, you know, um, in the past, especially in the last few decades, like that, that you know, the, the working together. And I, I believe this is where we're going to get a bunch of, you know, uh, leaders who, who are willing to lay down their lives and, and serve uh, God, serve one another, and, uh, and, and to, you know, to see the, the body of, equipped for the work of the, of the ministry, because that's, that's the goal. That's, we want to see everyone active. Amen. <laughs> so I get excited when I, when I, Think about you know that we we, we have a, a a role to play in that you know we don't have to you know, blow ourselves in, in big areas and say hey uh, look he comes um, you know the anointed one and he's going to like preach and it, all those times are gone like we, we we all God is looking for everyday people uh, you know with weaknesses with uh, you know with uh, without you know even any qualifications and he's looking for surrendered hearts and 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 that's what we're, we're here. Um, you know, and, and all of us, even on this chat, I know that, you know, we all attain to, um, you know, to see that God, God wants to use you, wants to use me, uh, so that we would see more people know the Lord Jesus uh, and be ready for his return. Wow, I'm looking forward to, you know, having a spotless bride, seeing that the, the body of Christ, the, the, the church, he's um, people, you know, ready to meet her, her, you know, her groom. Hallelujah. What an amazing thing. Amen. What we'll um what what we're gonna make a start? Hey, I think we're just gonna start in prayer, yeah. and I just we'll just um yeah maybe get get started. If Joel, if you have anything else to to add as we as we um you know, if, if we're doing the presentation or as we're doing, just put your hand up or just say hey I I just want to have something else to add. Whatever you're welcome to. Uh, but tonight we're just gonna be a presentation of of what it, what God has done over the last say six seven years, especially, but also what what is God wanting you know us to continue doing. And how, how we can actually, um, yeah, achieve that together. So, yeah, I'm just going to pray. Or, yeah, 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 Father, thank you for t today. We thank you that you're, you're, you're you know, um, looking for obedient, 
uh, disciples, um, you know, people who are ready to lay down their life, uh, pick up their cross and follow uh, follow you uh, with everything, God, not just, uh, uh, you know, uh, 90% or even 95%, but with 100%. Uh, just giving it all, God, and, and um, thank you for putting that hard design in, in each and every one of us, God, to to really um, learn to pray and to see it and, and allow you to speak to us. And then when we heed the voice of God to go, whatever you tell us to do, and not hold back, not, oh, well, that doesn't make sense, or uh, it may not look like in, in the eyes of others the way that I'm doing things, but it doesn't matter because if we hear you, uh, we're just going to go anyway, even if it feels like it's a little bit foolish or it's a bit, uh, you know, uh, far-fetched. We're just going to obey the voice of God rather than our own voices, the voice of man or anything else, because mm. that's what's going to count at the end of our lives. We're going to, uh, we, we really want to make an impact while we're alive in the short time that we're on, we're on this earth, God. Compared to eternity, this time on the earth is zero uh, compared to what's up ahead. So, God, I pray that we'll be productive and learn how to uh, really, really allow you to, to lead and take the wheel in Jesus' name. Thank you for everyone on this call tonight. Uh, Lord, that we will just present this from a heart of, of uh, you know, uh, burning for you, but also a heart of grieving for the lost, for those ones that don't know you, uh, those ones who are far from God. Uh, we're really hurting when people aren't walking with you, and we see there's a real need, uh, and you showed us the need, and uh, we want to just say, Lord, what is it that that that, that you know that you are uh, wanting us to do? And then just go and do it. I know the Great Commission is what you've told us to do. Luke 10 uh, just jumps out. The uh, you know the Word of God says the harvest is plenty. The laborers of you, therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out more laborers. So we're praying to you, the Lord of the harvest, that this is your harvest, that you would send even more laborers for this yeah. work to be done. And you're already doing that. Uh, thank you for that already in Jesus' name, that you're at work in the background. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, hey, welcome, Glennis. Uh, Hi, hey, well, Glennis. Welcome this, this evening. Praise the Lord. Solana, I'm just going to set up this um, share screen. Yeah, so we're just going to, like Cornelia said, we're just going to share a PowerPoint just of what the Lord has been doing. Yep. And if there's any questions, can we just maybe wait uh, until, until the end and then we'll, um, yeah, we'll try to answer any questions that you may have. Um, yeah, just... Can everybody see that? Thumbs up. Yeah. So um, maybe most people already know, but if you didn't know, we have a ministry called Boaz College. And Boaz College is um, been uh, sort of going for about seven years. So I think seven years this month, actually. Um, can you just do, do we make it smaller or? Um, not really. Okay, we'll just do that. So um, basically, yeah, we just want to thank you for giving up your time just to come and join us. And um, yeah, we just want to like share, share what the Lord has been doing um, through Bowers College and other disciples that we've met and then just sharing what it is that he wants to take us into next. So this one. Right, so yeah, basically um, Boaz College, our vision is um, about empowering and equipping disciples for Jesus Christ. And um, yeah, basically Matthew 28, eight, uh, 19 to 20, pretty much it's a well-known scripture for all of us, uh, but for us it's become a reality of, of our life, of, of having to, the way we live our life. So, you know, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember that I am with you always to the end of the age. So um, also he said to his disciples, as Cornelia just mentioned um, from Luke, but this, is, this one's from Matthew 9, that the harvest is truly great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest that he may send out workers into his harvest field. So one, so the thing is, is, our, is that... For us, 
going into the into the world and preaching the gospel is not just something we talk about it's not something that we pray about it's something that we've been engaged in for um yeah for many years and doing um because we know that that's the great commission and we know that that's what we're being called to do also um making disciples is um you know is is massive making disciples who obey jesus so who obey jesus in their identity but also in going at going to the harvest themselves and preaching the gospel um and basically just reproducing um you know what what christ is what what christ reproduced with his um disciples when he was here on the earth so that's the work that we're continuing to do and um you know one of the things that came up from our meeting last night is that i mean you know to to get people just to preach the gospel i'm talking about outside the the church or traditional buildings is one thing right but it's and so you know to go out and preach the gospel that's that's an that's an amazing thing that we're actually all called to do but it's another thing to actually make disciples um and then it's another thing yet again to make disciples who actually make disciples because that's where the reproducing is going to happen um and that's pretty much what the lord has called us to do um and he's reminding all of us all the time that the harvest is great um, and we'll see that as um, Cornelia, you know, ends some of these slides with some of these statistics that we have in our local area, but also in our nation. So over the last seven years, we um, we in this ministry have um, been hosting a lot of kickstart training events. So basically a kickstart training event comes from um, the last reformation ministry. And it's basically just encouraging believers and, um, you know, ministries and, and churches to get off the seats and into the streets. Like, how do we even, uh, why do we need to go out into the streets and how do we even approach people with the gospel? So we've been really blessed by that ministry and been hosting a lot of kickstarts all over the, the the east coast of australia for quite some time ourselves but with a core team of people as well um and then uh, the multiply movement and the no place left ministries which you know joel's um have been a massive uh, part of our life in that is the discipleship training because what we found with kickstarts is that we were going out where we were teaching people how to go out and to preach the gospel um and how to communicate the gospel um and then when they decide okay I'm gonna, i want to come to jesus and i want to come into um into a fellowship but well, now what do we do with them we've actually got to disciple them and we've got to disciple them well we've got to make sure that they have sound biblical um doctrine that we we know that they are um are going to be multipliers themselves they're not just going to be coming into the kingdom and becoming a pew sitter all right we've got enough of those we need people off the seats and into the streets um, and some of the other things is um, around making disciples who make disciples but also training in evangelism and outreach and expanding micro churches so expanding um, and micro churches or ecclesias whatever you want to call them just gatherings gatherings in parks gatherings in homes gathering under a tree wherever um, so that, that's the kind of stuff that we've been involved in quite heavily over the last seven years. Um, and um, the more that we get into it, the more that we identify the great needs of, the, of, um, of this. And what we're realizing is that the, the harvest is truly great. People are actually ready. They're really ready to hear the gospel. They're ready mm, and they're willing right. to come into the kingdom. And we have many friends, mm. and I know some of you here would be able to testify that too, we have people from different parts of the globe and they often come to Australia and say that um, that people here in Australia are really open to the gospel compared to where they've come from. So this is this mm. is a, a harvest field um, in Australia where people are really ready and they're mm. really hungry yeah. to be discipled. But the problem is, is there's, there's not enough laborers, there's not enough people that are giving themselves over to this work to support those who want to come into the kingdom. So we want to be able to release it, um, mm. you know, Cornelia full time um and myself you know part-time when i'm not working just to be able to engage with the harvest and disciple making um yeah at, at, a, at a greater level and and giving more time to it mm. um okay i'm gonna keep going so some of our mission most our missionary work has been on the um east coast of um australia from the top to the bottom and then the bottom to the top and that's pretty much what we've been engaging in we've um 
yeah, Cornelia's going to flick through a lot of slides. And look, it's just really pictures of what we've been doing. But there's been a lot of local ministries happening here in Brisbane Gold Coast, sometimes Sunshine Coast as well. Um, you want to keep going, buddy? Uh, keep going. Um, Emerald and Mount Morgan are places that we um, have been. Rockhampton and uh, Bundaberg. Yeah. Just let us know if we're going too yeah. fast. Um, this, this guy here in the middle, his name is Matthew, and he's... Um, he's been a, a big um, a big part of my life for the last two three years. Um, he's uh, with the Hell's Angels before. His dad was grew up in that area. He's been in and out of prison uh, for many many years. However, in the last sort of uh, year and a half, he's uh, kind of we built a friendship. Well, more more two years ago we met, and I started visiting him in prison. And he got out, and he really wanted to make a change. And anyway, just um, yeah. Uh, keep the space open with him. I believe God will use him in a significant way um, to, to, you know, to, to do, um, yeah, to do what he's called him, called that, uh, Matthew to do. And I'm, I'm praying for, for him, eh, to, to really make a, a big change and impact. So, yeah, sorry, so I just wanted to, to say about Matthew because yeah. um, he's always comes to mind every time I see him. God is definitely on, on his case. He won't leave him alone. Yeah. So, look, even with Matthew, but with every single face that you see on these slides, Every single person has got a story to tell and every single person is, is somebody that, that God loves and, um, yeah, really wants them to be reconciled to him. So we've had times in Cooktown, as we've seen in the, in the slide before, um, in Cohen, which is predominantly um, Indigenous, um, in Cairns. Cairns is a, is a place where we've um, spent a lot of time and done a lot of work up there and we'll continue to be connected with a lot of fellowships and churches up there. Um, so there's always a lot of baptisms up there, a lot of, um, yeah, taking out some of these people are pastors and leaders of churches, but we take them out, we take their people out as well, and we pretty much just engage them in the harvest, um, uh, show them what it's like to um, approach the lost and to pray for healing, to, um, to pray for people to be delivered. Um, again, we've been down south and in, in the Murrayville areas, um, beautiful connections down there and in Adelaide there's teams of people out there um, just engaging in the harvest uh, Melbourne as well um, yeah we're privileged to see baptisms there and people coming to faith um, in that area and Southwest Rocks actually is that middle photo I don't know why that's there in Melbourne but anyway that's Southwest Rocks areas which is in New South Wales but um, yeah just some pictures I guess of a lot of the trainings and the kickstarts that we're running in different locations um there's there's a lot to there's yeah a lot to mention and we do this work with a lot of people that are around the nation as well um just one particular story that we would like to talk about was um healings and household baptisms like we're seeing the book of acts come to life we're, we're literally seeing it as we go into these different places and just a, a short testimony about um, this household. This is Louis's household, but Louis's not even in this picture. Um, but yeah, this is yeah. Uh, we he had been praying. We were up in the Torres Strait Islands. Um, Louis had been praying to the Lord and saying, "Can you make a way for Cornelio and Sulata to come, Lord?" Um, and that was about. And then an hour later, we felt led to call him and say, "Can we come and stay at your place?" And we and mind you, we've never stayed at Louis's place. But we it have, wasn't a planned thing. It wasn't a planned thing. We've never stayed at Louis's place. We were meant to be elsewhere. So anyway, the next morning when we woke up, um, and we we just started to see straight away people were um, getting healed. They were hearing the the gospel. Um, you know, Louis's mum just got out of a walker and started walking around the house like praising the Lord. Um, and as we talked about repentance and baptism to Jesus, um, Rocky, which is Louis and Deb's in-laws, he got baptized. Then, um, you know, a few minutes later, Rocky is helping us to baptize his wife, Nanny. And then after Nanny's baptism, Papa, which is Louis's younger sister, she got baptized as well and had some massive um, deliverance that day. Um, after that, Ashanti, which is Louis and Deb's daughter-in-law, mm. she also got baptized, like the whole household got baptized. Uh, well, those that weren't baptized got baptized. <laughs> um, and then as we were um, 
thinking we're finishing up the baptisms, um, Louis's 73 year old mum, Veronica, she yells out from the main bedroom because this spa is in an ensuite and she's like, I'm getting baptized to Jesus Christ. And then she gets up and this has been a woman that's been in a walker and, and has a foot brace and everything. She walks over and then the men lift her into the spa. Mm. She gets baptized um, to Jesus, comes up out of the water and begins praying in the spirit, praying in tongues. Now, this is, um, this is like uh, a miracle because this was the reason why Louis actually was praying for us specifically to come to his house because his mum was 73 years old. She's been steeped in a religious uh, mm. system and cultural traditions for so many years. And all he wanted was for her to know Jesus. And um, she, she obviously, she got healing. She got filled with the spirit. She got baptized. She was like a newborn baby walking around the house without her walker, um, just praising mm. the Lord. So, um, you know, these things are happening as we travel and we see what God is doing across the nation. Amen. And um, we're really thankful because Sister Veronica, she went and passed to be with the Lord just, what, a couple of weeks ago? A month ago. She's just gone to be with the Lord. And, and Louis, you know, calling us up saying, you know, um, I'm very sad that my mom's gone, but I'm also very happy because I know that she's with, I know where she is mm. and that she's with the Lord. And so we need Amen. to see more of these things and, and believe for these things, these greater things that Jesus talked about. Greater things will you do because I'm going to the Father. Amen. And I can testify, and I know that you guys can testify too um, and see testimonies in your lives, that this is happening. The book of Acts is coming to life. Households are getting saved. People are coming to Christ. People are hungry for the gospel. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've been blessed to be a part of that work um, and giving ourselves and making ourselves available available for that work. Uh, the Torres Strait Islands is another place where mm. the Lord's hand and heart is really strong upon and he's given us the um, open doors to to go there and to preach the gospel to um, yeah many 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 um, believers and non-believers but also uh, churches that gather together. They they really taught us what what um, John is it John 1435 or 13 45 it talks about that the world will know that you are my disciples John 17. by the okay by the way that you love one yeah. another <laughs> when we go to these islands and we see the way these churches um they work together they actually meet together so like it, in these pictures you've got like different pastors of different churches and they actually gather regularly in each other's mm. buildings there's even there's at least four pastors in this picture and so we're actually taking pastors out into the streets because they're not used to preaching the gospel. They're used to people people coming into their churches. Just slow down a bit, please. They're used to people coming into their churches. And, um, you know, but we're saying, no, this is Jesus said, told us to go. So that means we need to get out of our comfortability and go into the harvest. Mm. And we need to teach all those that are coming into our fellowship mm. to do the same. And when we teach them to go out into the harvest and do the same, we also have to teach them how to disciple the ones that they're reaching out to. Because mm. we don't want to be irresponsible and just preach, 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 but not be willing to disciple. You know, we have to be responsible and good stewards over those that we're preaching to. And if we can't disciple them because for whatever reasons, time commitments or location issues, we can connect them with some someone that is strong in the Lord that will be able to raise them well and disciple them well to obey Jesus. So um, this is Pastor Levi, who's also the mayor of Moa Island. And he was the first person that we baptized um, on the island um, to Jesus. And then after that, it was just baptisms. This is JT. This is Pastor Chris. He's also the um, regional council. Um, I don't know. He's in charge of all the environmental stuff in the islands. This is Pastor James, another pastor that we baptized. And um, as we baptized, the, as we baptized one or two, we got them to baptize others. So, um, yeah, that's Pastor Chris uh, baptizing Sister Susanna. And that's uh, this is Pastor Rita here, this, this guy. In the, we got that. 
this guy here in the blue jeans, he's another pastor that wasn't even there that week when mm. we had a rally there. He's been praying for two, three years yeah. for these regions that they'll come to an understanding of the real gospel of Acts 2.38. And he's yeah. kept telling them about it and they kept mocking him, kept saying, oh, what are you talking about, old man? And they were kind of in a way that, you know, and, and he's and when, he, when, we, when this was happening on the beach, brothers, like, this is a miracle. This is an answer yeah. prayer that these people actually got it and then they're now, you know, coming back to the simple you know, book of Acts. Yeah, so it was really amazing because um, we know that this is not about Cornelius, this is not about me, this is not about um, that brother. This is just what God is doing. Um, this is a work of God. We just uh, we just make ourselves available and we just go wherever the, the Lord leads. And he's the one that does the healings. He's Amen. the one that does the baptizing. He's the one that fills people with the Spirit and gives them the ability to, to speak in tongues. Can you go back to this one, please? So um, this one is... Um, uh, brother Fred. Brother Fred, he's from Thursday Island and um, we kind of just, well, Cornelia just boldly invited himself to stay at, we, we, we're coming to stay at your <laughs> house. I rang him two, <laughs> two, three weeks before we went to Thursday and I'm like, hey, we're coming to Thursday Island, we've got to stay the night before the flight goes the next day. I said, we're coming to your house. And he's yeah. like, um, yeah, I think it should be all right. I'll just talk to my wife first. Yeah. <laughs> now, now we actually baptized his young son, JT, and who About lives, six months before. Who lives in, in an island with his nana, which yeah. we're very really close to. But he was a little bit reluctant because, you know, he liked his booze and he liked his drugs oh, wow. and he liked his fun. Now, we had dinner there with them and they were so, like, just so loving towards us and open up their home and their heart to us. And after dinner, we're like, okay, now we're going to get out the spiritual food. So we brought out the Bibles and we began reading the Word of God together, talking about repentance, talking about, no. um, you know, Jesus. And he was so convicted that the next he went, he had to go to work. He works night shift and he came back from work. And then we went down to the water and we baptized him. Um, just before we like, we were actually late for our ferry. They had to call the ferry to come back and pick us up. We were like running um, to catch this ferry into the yeah. outer islands. But he got baptized, and it's really significant because he's a very influential man. Mm. Um, he also has children. So if the father comes to the faith, the children are going to come to the faith. Amen. So a lot of people were calling him up, you know, um, it party at my place. And Freddie's like, oh, no, I can't do that anymore. I follow Jesus. Amen. So um, we're hearing he's quite famous around the islands. There's stories about Freddie going around everywhere. And even his mother-in-law, everyone keeps saying, oh, God's heard your prayers, Eunice. God's heard your prayers. They've saved your son-in-law. So, <laughs> yeah, just it's exciting to see um, how God is. Um, healing households and, and reconciling fathers back to to his heart and we have many opportunities to um, to work with children in the islands as well it's in Warabah in Warabah yeah. it's a different island um, teaching them the gospel and how to communicate the gospel taking them out on the streets to do it teaching them how to pray for the sick and lay hands on the sick um, also going into with the you know, with the church groups there that we're invited to. Um, mm. They have never seen, and now these are, are my, to be honest, um, they've, they have not seen, um, they've been faithfully going to church and serving the Lord for, you know, years after years after years. We're, we're talking about mm. people in their 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and they love the Lord. They have such a fear yeah. and a reverence for God. But... They, they haven't been seeing the power of God. Yeah. And so when they started seeing children healing people, like laying hands and people being healed, they started getting really excited and they start laying hands on each other and everybody's getting healed. Yeah. And like on the first couple of nights... Well, when we arrived there in Warabah, just th just a quick um, you know side note, I, start, I started going deaf in both of my ears and uh, I started losing my sight. And my throat and my, my voice started, to, I, I couldn't speak. And, um, and and for the next two, three days, I was struggling. I said, Lord, what's going on? And then God showed me, I had a dream. And the Lord showed up and says, the reason you, you're going through this stuff is because in this village, a lot of people, they can't hear spiritually, they can't see, uh, and they can't speak. It's like they're, uh, you know, they're, 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 there's, a, there's a lot of wells, but they're dug. 
I mean, they, they've got covered, uh, you know, uh, covering. And we, we're like God saying, you need to dig these wells out. You need to dig them because there's strong f- uh, fountains in, in these wells, uh, you know, to water the gush out. But you need to pray and to see. So I started praying and fasting, obviously, the first day that I arrived there. But it took me two days until God showed me why I'm going through this. And, and so anyway, I testified to that on another video about the breakthrough that happened after three, the second and third day, things started giving in. And, and um, when there was only a few people coming to the fellowships and the training in the evenings, by the time people were getting healed and, and delivered, by the second, by the by the second last night, we had the whole a whole place came was filled. People were hearing about the healings yes. and deliverance and and some demonic oppression of people, and they all lined up because they wanted to get healed. And we then got all these other leaders that were healed. Now they were going to others. And they were starting to pray for the sick, and they started seeing the power of God. It was it was exceptional, uh, you know, week there. What in Warabal? Yeah, so it's like people have been reignited, refired up. So, yeah, keep going. Beautiful place, but yeah, and even just um, yeah, some work down in the Ballarat area, um, Mount Light. Just a couple of weeks ago, Cornelia was there, and we're going to be doing some work with some of these, um, you know, saints over there. So. Um, yeah, thank you for that. I just wanted to share a few testimonies of, um, and I'm just, we're just sharing a glimpse of what God is doing. Mm. I mean, yeah, we could all, all of us on this call could share for hours about, um, how the Lord is moving, mm. but I think Cornelia is just going to talk now about these slides, yeah. the vision yeah. and the mission. Awesome. No, thank you, Solana. That was, um, that was, um, something that, you know, I want to just talk, uh, go from Solana. This is. Um, not, not, um, can everyone see the screen? Everyone can see that screen pretty good. I'm just getting some bad screen, uh, things here. Here we go. I'm just trying to set up my notes a little bit. Just a few things I'm going to be reading. Um, but I just can't seem to, I think I've lost. What you um, lost? It says it's paused. Screen sharing is paused. Let me just close this and then open up again. How's that? That's better. Awesome. Do you want to read off these notes? Um, have to open. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, I've lost the sharing of the screen. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I don't know what happened. We've lost the screen. It just disappeared. So one quick thing. I'll just go back to here. I'm going to type it in. 20. Type it in, Lana. Do you want to just share the vision while I find yeah. it? Yeah. So um, our... <clears throat> our um, mission and something recently that I've started to pick up on Chris Gal- Galena. I've been, I watched a, a short uh, presentation that he did around uh, you know a, a church planting movement and the vision that he shared I, it was really appealing to me so I actually took it upon uh, you know myself and I said hey I need this vision we need to capture the heart of uh, of this and, and anyway um, the vision went something like this a church planting movement um, you know to facilitate a by DMM process of finding persons of peace in the geographical area especially around Brisbane and Gold Coast that will reproduce groups that will start reproducing micro churches, such as that fifty thousand, um, you know, ecclesia micro churches are planted, and twenty thousand new believers planted in this field in the next ten years. And so, um, and for the next twelve months, um, you know, this would would be something that we wanted to um, obviously um, just invite you to partner with us and. Um, and obviously, we want to. I want to be be released. Not only just me, but there's others, uh, others that would like to to be be released as well in this uh, in this work. And so, the finances are needed to get this work done. And so, uh, missionaries are really um, you know, financially, um, uh, you know, there's there's the real need for this. And and so the task that that that's available is it's actually um, not not as 
obviously as simple as we thought. Obviously, over the last three, four years, Solana and I, we've been sort of combining incomes and, and, and um, work, working really hard to obviously get out there. Um, and last year, 2022, we put the whole year aside, just literally uh, got into a caravan with our sons. We homeschool them and we began to hit the road. And as a result, uh, you know, we, we started seeing um, where God was taking us. Um, and, and, and then for the whole year, we recognized, wow, this is a, a real uh, beautiful life. But at the same time, it's, um, it's expensive. And that's what Jesus says, you know, like, um, you know, whoever desires to follow me, he must pick up his cross and follow him. And um, it's going to cost. There's going to be a, a lot of, uh, you know, in, in involvement in this cost. So, of course, we're not going to, um, you know, hold back from, you know, going full throttle in, in, in what he's asking us to do. So, um, praise the Lord. Just now we've got the thing, the slides back up. Uh, PowerPoint. Uh, Here we go. Praise the Lord. Not sure what happened here, Lana. <laughs> it's like we've... Is everyone still on there? Yeah, we're still here. Okay. Still there. <clears throat> Just go from here. Yeah, I know, but we've lost them on the screen here. Doesn't matter. Yes, it does, okay. because... Can you guys still see the PowerPoint? They, can, they can't. Because they yeah. share. Yes. No. Oh, no. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, yep. yes. Can now. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you for your patience. So yeah, over the last seven years, we as a family have been going out in the harvest. And then this is a, a, a thing that it's become uh, part of our lifestyle. And so we started opening up our house and uh, regularly meetings, um, regularly doing the trainings, uh, obviously being called out in, in Harvey Bay. We went out there with a the team, but we're literally, it's about the kingdom of God and we want to continue to uh, make disciples, training uh, directly and equipping believers um, you know, to see multiple, uh, you know, other streams of churches to do the same. And so it's um, very, very simple why we're doing, we want to do this is actually because the, the brutal facts um, and, and the, the facts, you know, that outline in, in the Brisbane area on the Gold Coast, there's 3.2 million people in Brisbane uh, and in Gold Coast combined. And that's 96% of the people that don't know God, they are far from God. And so really 300,000 believers out of that, um, you know, it's a small percentage of the 4% that, um, you know, that are actually going out there sharing their faith with others and making disciples. And so in Australia alone, there are 26.5 million people. And so that's around 25 million, if 96%, uh, you know, include that don't know God. That's a lot of people. And um, so of, of this 26.5 26 million people in Australia, only 70,000 people are actively sharing the gospel. And this is an astron astronomical number, but of this 70,000 people, only a very small percentage are actually making disciples mm -hmm. who makes disciples to obey Jesus and the Great Commission. And so, um, really, who is responsible for this work? That's the question. And so, what is it going to take to reach lostness until there is no place left? And I asked myself that question a few years ago, like, Lord, who is responsible for this? And of course, the Lord... You know, straight away says, you are, you're responsible. And then he says, then, then you know, the Lord says, look, I'm here, Luke 10. Um, you know, the harvest is plain, the labors are few. Therefore, go into the harvest. He says, I'm, you've answered your own prayer. When you pray to me to send out more laborers, you're the first one. And I started to like, okay, so this is it. And so then the question was, and what, was I willing to sacrifice my life and to reach the, this unsaved people, uh, you know, groups and make disciples? And that was a, a huge question that I had to ask before I started doing something about it. But, uh, but, but the opportunity was there. So uh, we understand that not everyone is in the position uh, you know, and able to give their lives for this full-time work. So everyone um, you know, who would like to partner in this and would like to support us in, in ways such as prayer, even finances, providing even your resources, even time if you'd like to come and learn. Um, you know, this, is, this is pretty much what we're offering those ones who would like to embark on the, on the mission of their lifetime. So we are willing to go. That's really the, the quick answer. And um, 
So I would like you to uh, just listen to a little bit of the, the, the uh, financial side of things, of, um, you know, of, of what it costs, obviously, to, to do this full time for 12 months. So um, we calculated that over the next 12 months, you know, um, there is a cost involved and, and financially, um, you know, it's going to be um, $48,000 that we're trying to raise for this, um, you know, for one missionary to be released full time for this work. And so that's, um, that's just $4,000 monthly. Uh, weekly, $950. Uh, that's in Australian dollars uh, for those that don't live in Australia. But if we can get 20 people to commit, um, you, know, um, you know, with $200 per month over a period of 12 months, that'll cover the cost. Really, that's $46 a week, uh, you know, and um, that will cost, uh, you know, to free up one missionary to do this full time. And I'm so glad yesterday we had a few people over and a couple of people put their hand up and they says, yep, I will, uh, I will sow into this. And um, there was one other brother, he put his hand up and he actually said, look, I want to sow for six months, you know, up front. And so that was a real blessing for us to say, wow, God's on this. And, and he, he actually uh, wants others to be involved, to invest their time in something that's going to produce fruit and fruit that will last. Because obviously there's a, um, you know, there's, there's a, a, an illustration in the parables that, uh, you know, when we're in a good soil, some will produce 30, some 60, some 100 of what was sowed. So uh, really this is, this is where we're at. And, and just another uh, a brief thing about finances before, you know, we'll come into a close. And if you have any questions, but Solana and I, we've been married for 13 years now. Uh, and in this 13 years, the first year or two years, uh, you know, we, we sort of just took it easy. We sort of tested the waters. We still had evangelism hard to get the gospel out there. But there was a point in time after about two years of us being married, we, we just kept going out. We did a few skate parks and, and did barbecues and stuff like that. But we sat uh, in the car park one afternoon. We just finished an outreach. And just her and I, we had the barbecue set up in our ute. And we're looking at each other. I said, we said, this is hard work. Like we're literally, um, you know, we're going to burn out if we continue. We don't have the finances to back us. Uh, you know, we don't really have, um, you know, that, that um, yeah, we had a little bit of debt. We had like, you know, over thirty, forty thousand worth of some things that we had to pay. Plus we had two cars and, and plus we had another credit card. And like, that's the reason when we can't do anything. So we're like sitting there and we started, let's pray. We said, let's just see God about this. So we just started praying, heartfelt prayers to God. We just took it in turns. And, and straight away, within the next day or two, someone handed us a CD. And I started uh, learning around managing uh, you know, our time and money. Being, uh, you know, instead of being you know, a servant, sorry, uh, uh, um, making the, the, slave. being a slave to, to money, how can we make money become our slave? And so God opened up a business within two years and we started learning how to get out of debt. We're tithing into the local ministry that we're doing um, and, and even beyond just tithing. And the more we started to you know, take this life seriously, with, within two and a half, uh, three years, we're free of debt. We literally had nothing owning to anyone. And so it freed up our time to continue to get out in the harvest, open up our house prayer meetings uh, and, and, and starting other fellowships in, in, in just literally just simply living uh, with, within our means, but we didn't go out to just spend, uh, you know, uh, money or things like that on ourselves. We just wanted to reach out, uh, doing, do, doing what the Lord told us to do with our time. And so leading up to where, where we are today, we're so thankful to God that it, He helped us along the way to free ourselves uh, financially free up our time and leverage it for this type of work. So we, we're not here by accident. God has helped us all the way till till we're out today. And we're so thankful that, you know, everybody can have this opportunity and see God for wisdom uh, in this area. But it, it, it requires energy and it requires, you know, financially to get the, the word out and, and, and do this full time. So, you know, it, it is cost involved for fuel, for traveling expenses, rentals, um, you know, other, other, other everyday pressures. But I'm believing and trusting the Lord that, um, you know, for the next 12 months, that he's the one that's um, going to actually look after us. So this is our presentation. And uh, we want to just make it very um, obviously um, personal, but we want to share it with you uh, in the hope that, you know, you would like to come and invest your time and resource to, to help us with uh, raising this um, these funds of $48,000 to, yeah, to be released into this full time. So Matthew 16, 24 to 26 then Jesus said to his disciples, If anybody desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me.
For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life uh, for my sake, um, he will have, he would have found it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each one according to his word. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, <clears throat> yeah. So I just like to um, just finish off with a, a, a prayer. Um, in fact, um, where is is Brother Joel still here? Yeah. Brother Joel, do you want to just finish off with a prayer, and then what we'll do, uh, we'll just go with a, if anyone has one or two questions, and then we'll just finish up for five minutes using a Harold story, four fields, five parts, uh, just to finish off with that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah, love to love to pray, and really, once again, just want to say, uh, just so thankful to be partnering with this incredible couple. And uh, I know that they have invested so much, you know, um, being willing to to lay everything down. You know, if the Lord says to just live into a, a caravan, I know that they're willing to do that. They were personally spending like three thousand dollars just to fly up to up to Cairns and Moa Island. They were willing to do that several times a year. And uh, I just know that this is tremendously fruitful ground, as I mentioned before, that you know, according to the U.S. statistics, $1.5 million per baptism is probably similar over here in the, in the U.S. And I know that they're going to share a story uh, just in a moment with with uh, with Harold over in Moa Island, three baptisms one day. And when you think about it, just uh, I know that Cornelia was on really good money with his with his business and putting many others on his $48,000 is, is significantly less than what he was, I'm sure that he was making before. And, uh, but you think about it it's a hundred, I think it's $131 per day for three baptisms. It would have been $4.5 million. So that's the kind of investment, a very small investment with a huge kingdom, kingdom outcome. So Lord, I just thank you, Father, for this uh, couple. Lord, I thank you that they are sold out for your kingdom and for your glory. Lord, I thank you that you are bringing the right supporters around them, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, so that they are free, that they're not tied down by, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, the the uh, the current business that he's running, uh, in order to uh, feel the pressure to run a local church just to get tithes and offerings. But we just thank you, Father, that there's an apostolic call to break ground, to equip Christians, to become disciple makers, and to to see the one uh, the the lost saved and become fruitful disciples that make disciples until there's no place left. We thank you, Father, for the significant vision that is that you placed upon the heart, the amazing fruit that has co already come through that, Lord, and that you are empowering them, that you are God that supplies all of their needs according to your riches and glory. Lord, I know that the, this, this couple has so much heavenly reward that's coming their way in Jesus' name. So we bless them. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to finish in about two to three. About five minutes. Maybe not. Yeah, in a, in a few minutes we're going to finish. But we just want to share um, a really cool story about how, um, yeah, how people can, how, how we can engage with lostness and then people can come into that discipleship story with the view of, um, of helping them to also be um, a reproducing disciple or leader laborer. So this is called Harold. Um, this is a story of Harold, four fields, five parts in one day. And uh, Harold is a representative of many stories that we all know about. But, um, yeah, we just want to, you know, talk through this. But um, the four fields uh, Jesus strategy is based on Mark chapter 4. Um, so I encourage you to read it at some point later. But basically this is... Um, yeah, this is about, um, yeah, can, if you can see the screen there, um, you got the little man to, to the side and um, the first field is the entry. The parables talks about a farmer going into an empty field, entering into empty field. All right. The second thing that he does, which is the second um, part of this strategy, is that he, he sows seed. Um, wait, we just got... 
that's better. He sows seeds. Um, and then into the third field, that seed begins to grow. He does what he needs to do to nurture it, to grow it, to fertilize it, but the seed begins to grow. Then in the fourth field, the fourth part is that he, um, once that, that um, crop has grown, then he gathers it. He gathers, he gathers the, um, the, the wheat or the, the plant, and then he um, uses some of that. He uses some of that to sow back a seed into the field, going back into the empty field, clearing it and replanting. Well, it's the same thing with us and with the Lord and what the Lord is wanting us to do. And it's the same thing that we've been seeing that the Lord has been doing um, in our lives is that we go into an empty field. We go into a place um, where the, the gospel hasn't been preached. All right. And then we sow the seed, which is the word of God into that field. We see the we sow the gospel. Um, so go gospel, grow and gather. So um, we sow the seeds of the gospel, um, and then um, we once people are persons of peace and they respond to the gospel, they begin to grow in intentional discipleship. We have to help them grow as disciples, um, and then that that usually comes into a church formation when other family members or oikos members around that disciple begin to want to come into that gathering as well. And then we have what's called a gathering or a church or an ecclesia or a fellowship. But what we need to do, and this is the problem with with what's happening in some of our modern day churches, is that. One, it's great if the gospel is being preached outside of the four walls of the church. It's happening sometimes, but it's not happening other times. In the discipleship phase, it can be problematic if you've got like one or two pastors and they are leading a congregation of say two, three hundred people, right? It's like they don't have the, the, the resources or the time to spread themselves to everybody to actually be able to disciple to disciple people effectively in following and obeying Jesus and, and obeying the Great Commission. So um, what, what that does is it causes people to be receivers rather than those that are actually going out um, and being active in the kingdom. They become participants or, sorry, spectators rather than participators. So um, in discipleship, we've all been called to disciple. We've all been called to make disciples. And so um, we, we need to be intentional about that. And even if, it, if you do have a few disciples and you have a church gathering in our modern day times, a lot of times it is just a gathering. It's a gathering. So you see a lot of people just coming together, but there's not much um, reproducing. So in the Four Fields Five Parts uh, model, it's about coming together in church formation but it's about sending people back out into the in, into the field as lead, leaders and laborers so they're sending them out back into the entry field uh into the empty field to share the gospel to make disciples to grow churches and then to continuously reproduce so this is supposed to be a living model not a stagnant one um so so just talking about that model with a particular person um, field one is entry, St. Paul's in Moa Island by the horse paddock, right? This is just an example. The field two, the gospel part two, the gospel was shared by Cornelius um, using the three circles. Harold, who's in the brown shirt up here with the brown sort of um, tan shirt, he heard the gospel. He repented of his sins towards God. He got. We took him down to the water and he got water baptized into Jesus' name. He also, while he got baptized um, in, in the waters of baptism, he also, when he came out of the water as a new creation, was received the Holy Spirit and began speaking in tongues, right? So this is Harold. Now, later that night, we took Harold to a gathering that we were having with a whole lot of pastors and leaders and disciples. Um, so he ended up attending the um, 411 discipleship training. So he's now connected with them and is connected to strong disciples and is committing to um, uh, meeting a couple of times a week around the word of God, around the commands of Christ, and also around going out. So 
um, field four, that gathering part, so the gathering of um, believers, Harold gathered his oikos or his family, um, which is his brother Coco, up in the um, in the top picture. That's his brother Coco in the black shirt. And that's his mother Veronica with the um, towel draped over her. Now, they also repented and got baptized, and they also received the baptism of the Holy Spirit on that same day. So this was a family. This was a household coming to faith. And they are also both now attending weekly discipleship training. Mm. Veronica's meeting up with the women. Coco and Harold are meeting up with some of the men. So this is an amazing thing. And this is... Um, yeah, this is Harold's mom, Veronica. She's not only just meeting, but she's now testifying and preaching the gospel even to believers, which is quite funny. But anyway, to everybody, but also to believers. You can just skip that one. And coming back to that middle section of the five parts, um, you know, Harold and Coco, they have both been identified as um, as leaders and laborers, and they will also be trained and discipled. And they have, they also have plans to share the gospel, um, to all their horse riding friends and all those people in the young communities. So this is what we're talking about. When we bring someone into the kingdom, it's about you're coming into the kingdom for the purpose of finding your identity, but also that you would be well-equipped to be able to go back out into the world and preach the gospel and make disciples who make disciples. All right. It's not just you're coming into the kingdom so that you can have a lovely life while everybody else in your oikos or in your surrounding communities are not hearing about Jesus and that they, they, they have the potential to die without knowing him. So we're, we're telling people about, um, yeah, about the need to be uh, active in their faith wherever they can and with whatever, um, yeah, with, with what, however they're able to in the season that they're in. So, yeah, I hope that story yeah. encourages you um, and um, and just, I guess, shows you how, um, yeah, how impacting it can be when we engage with the harvest and when we engage with the work that Jesus has given us to make disciples. Praise the Lord. Thank you. And so, yeah, I appreciate everybody just, um, yeah, coming on. And hi, um, hey, Sister, Sister Zoe. Zoe. If anyone has any questions, just a couple of minutes. If um, if you have any questions or to clarify anything or, um, yeah, is there, is there someone? Just put your hand up, unmute yourself, and just, yeah, we'd love to, to hear your comments. John's got his hand up. Uh, just unmute yourself if you can, John. Press the un unmute your button with the um, the little microphone. There's a little button in the corner to the left. Okay. Well, there, there we go. Yeah. No. Um. I know you guys a little bit, and. Uh, a prophetic edge here that God says he's got his hand on you too, okay? He's going to look after you. There is a revival coming to this nation, okay? And it's going to blow Australians away. Um, you know, God said to me, people are going to take their eyes off the government. They're going to turn back to God. There's going to be a massive revival through this nation. I, I think you guys are really on the cutting edge. I think we're going to be amazed at how many people will come to Christ. So I'm just sort of, I'm just really encouraging you. Um, and I think you're spot on because we, we're going to need leaders. God said he's going to raise up leaders. We're going to need to so people who can discipleship, disciple Christians. Um, I, I don't think finances is going to be a problem for you. I think God's going to um, raise that up for you because I think there's going to be such a need in Australia. I, I've seen it. And I, I, um, I just completed reading a book, Heaven is So Real. God really got hold of me and he really burdened me that I had to tell people about um, heaven being real because if people don't embrace Christ and they don't make a decision, they can go to hell. The reality is, you know what I mean? That's, that really burdened me that um, people, if they reject or accept Christ, their whole eternity um, hinges on that. Probably all I want to say at the moment, but 
I know a revival is coming to this nation and, and you are probably on the forefront of waking up to the fact that what you're doing is actually what we need. But I, I think God even said if the church doesn't wake up, he will bypass the church. And he's just there's just going to be thousands and thousands of men and women coming to Christ. That's how big it is. So in actual fact, don't bark up the tree with churches in the sense that if they don't come on board, and they stiff-necked and proud. God's just going to is already in the process of raising up leaders to cope with revival. Now, it's a God thing. You you'll get confirmation of this, but I think you know what I'm saying. Um, mm -hmm. If the churches were going to do this, they would have done it. Some churches do, a lot of churches don't. They're just social clubs. While the devil runs rampant. That's probably about all I have time to say. You know, I don't want to hold it all up. But I, if that encourages you, I hope so. Thank you. Mm. For, thank you thank for sharing. You, Thank you, John. Mm. Really appreciate mm. it. Mm. Praise the Lord. Who else? Anyone else wants to um, say anything or have a question or mm. um, just one or two minutes? Here's Brother um, Kennedy. Do you want to um, unmute, unmute yourself? Unmute, brother. And just. Okay, please good. Yep, go for it. Okay, I uh, just have a question uh, that I would just like uh, to ask at this particular moment. Uh, uh, my question just go directly. How can somebody be equipped uh, for uh, for us to witness the multiplication of movement over here in Kenya about the entire training of discipleship uh, making and the entire lesson that you already learned? Say, say that again. I just got, I couldn't get the question. So you're asking how can this come to Kenya? Okay. No, no, no. I was just asking about uh, how can someone uh, be equipped uh, with this uh, uh, movement of multiplication uh, about the four field strategy uh, that we've just learned. Uh, just the entire concept, uh, how can somebody be equipped uh, with a kind of a training for us also to witness the movement or the multiplication in God's kingdom. So, Joel, do you want to speak into that? Because we got the multiply movement. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I just I, I sense that the question is around how do we begin multiplying here? Because this is a movement that God is doing. Um, how how can we get it over here in Kenya? Because we you know we want to be part of this. Who would like to answer? I mean, brother Joel, if you want to have a quick. Yeah, I I think that this there's actually a uh, no place left Facebook page, um, hashtag no place left, and I'm sure that they I would be very surprised if there weren't no place left practitioners in Kenya um, that you could potentially reach out to. But there's um, maybe we could uh, send a link to some videos as well. Maybe just put your put your email in the chat. And we'd ha I'd happy happy to tell you some some things. What yeah. is, is that? What do you think, Cornelia? I I think so. If if we can maybe send some resources. Uh, also, we have a TLR map as well that uh, may have some disciples already in Kenya. near Kenya and your region. Uh, we just have to um, we can obviously just, with them. just type in 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 our in the map and see if we can locate anyone. Uh, but if you send us your email across, uh, we will send a couple of resource videos and also I will um, put your email in contact with somebody near your area. If and I'm, I'm sure there's a, a few people around that, you know, that uh, are doing some type of fellowship. But look, if, if anything, if there isn't any, but I'm pretty sure what Brother Joel said, that there is a no place left, um, you know, probably a catalyst group there that are already doing something. So it's just a matter of, um, getting you connected to the right people, yeah? Yeah, we're also strongly connected with um, pastors and leaders in India and also in Uganda. And one of the um, pastors in Uganda is actually from Kenya. So he's a Kenyan pastor working in Uganda. Um, so, yeah, we're looking but, for... But he's asking us to go there. Yeah, they're sort of asking us to make a time um to, in the to, next year or two to to, to two, make ourselves weeks, available to go there for some training and stuff like that for their church fellowships and gatherings so there's people that are 
um, yeah, that are hungry for that as well. It may even happen sooner. We don't have to wait two yeah. years. If the Lord fast tracks and the Lord says go, we will buy we'll tickets go. and go in two months. Like next year in January, we'll be in Kenya for two months or two weeks. <laughs> we don't need to stay two months unless we move there. Bring a tent. <laughs> I'm anyway, sure Joel will, will we come. Will, we will make connect, a team brother. together and you know, bring Daniel with us uh, or Zoe <laughs> or uh, even John and just you know give you the hands-on tools straight away, chuck in the deep end. Awesome. Any, any other questions? Um, any other uh, we've got your email, brother. Thank you, um, Brother Kennedy. Anyone else for last questions? Sister Zoe, Daniel, Solomona, all good? Sister Glennis? Um, maybe just a quick one. With the discipleship, um, as you train them um, and you create a church, um, is it possible to, if it's kind of scattered, and perhaps people are in different towns or there's like maybe just one person you discipled, is it possible that um, they can go to a local church or is it strictly something that you would try and create in your house? Right. Yeah. Um, good question. What I want to say is that we're free in Christ. <laughs> we're free. <laughs> And we're led by the spirit and we just got to obey God and there's no rules and regulations and all of these kind of things. But wherever there's life and wherever the Holy Spirit leads, um, you know, with because if, if, if that's something for a season um, that that's really um, helping a disciple to grow. Um, and they don't have other fellowships in their area. And I know your own personal situation, sister, may yeah. be very different to what other people's situations look like here on the Zoom chat. Um, and there's maybe not a lot of other um, disciples around. But, um, yeah, I mean, we would never say to somebody, you can do that, you can't do this and you can't do yeah. that because we're not God. Um, but if it's something that's um, helping you to grow um, and that, um, yeah, you just got to be led by the spirit. We're not here to control people or tell you people where they can go and where they can't go, but just use discernment as well. Mm -hmm. And um, even it doesn't matter if you go, if you do go to a fellowship, we're always looking for someone. Who is that someone that I can actually just disciple? And you can bring them into your home. You can meet them at Macca's. You can go to their home and you can actually just learn to disciple them and sit in the yeah. word of God together, you know? And so um, what we like to do, even with kickstart trainings and the multiply movement, no place left stuff is, is that um, when we, when we um, lead someone to the Lord or we tell somebody preach the gospel and they want to, they're a person of peace and they want to accept Christ and, um, we don't want to just take them to church because that's where they're going to, you know, accept Christ. No, Sorry, we want to. I'll be back in a second. The baby's just oh. crying. Oh, no worries. I've got to get back. Back. Yeah. Just the question yeah. So basically, watch the recording. so basically, we don't want to just um, have people thinking that that's. That's what you've got to do so that, somebody, so that someone in your workplace, for example, well, I'm just going to invite them to church, hoping that they say a sinner's prayer and come to the Lord. No, we want people to be equipped to be able to take people through the gospel, to be able to talk about the need for repentance and to be able to baptize them, to be able to pray for them, see them being healed, see them being delivered and set free and begin the process of discipling them in the word of God and in, 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 in the works of God as well in terms of outreaching to people. So that's basically what we need to be all doing. Um, and, you know, if church is a, is a place that you want to go and visit because you get filled up and you get, you know, fellowshipping with people, fantastic, do that. But that that's not necessarily going to help you be a disciple. Mm. Praise the Lord. Very good. Good answer. Um, yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, we're going to probably wrap it up. I think we've gone a little bit over time, but it's all good. Look, it's um, it's 20 past eight here in, in Brisbane uh, area. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone's from New South Wales. I think Zoe was. Uh, John's from Brisbane as well. Solomon is also in Brisbane. Why don't we just, yeah, just thank you. Hi. Yeah, thank you guys for coming on tonight. And I and, uh, appreciate your time, taking the you know the, the time to just be with us. And, um, yeah, just really keep us in prayer. And, um, yeah, just if, if anything, 
Um, remember that we are all um, God's special uh, favorites, and um, none of us in this room, uh, you know, are going to get out of this world alive. The reason I'm saying that is because we're all going to face God one day, and we're going to give account for the things that that you know that we're, we're um, commanded to do. And there's going to be a wide judgment seat of Christ at the end of our life, and every believer is going to stand before this throne, and we 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 we're going to get rewarded for the things that we're doing. Um, and, and that's a beautiful thing. That means that we're going to get, I'm going to get intentional about what I'm going to do so I can actually get, you know, the maximize my time, the short time that I'm here so that, you know, our reward or the things that God has given us is actually in alignment with the measure of faith that we've been given. And we can produce that uh, through our, our growing, maturing. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to that day when I stand, stand before God. But it does, um, you know, create an urgency inside of me. And, and I don't want to sit around and wait for things to happen. I want to be in the thick of it where God is. And if God is into something, I'm, I'm, I'm fair enough. I'm going to actually put my hand up and say, God, here I am. What do I do today? And I believe that this is why intentional discipleship is, is crucial. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm believing for more to get this vision and get the heart of God. Because when we read the book of Acts and we start to see it in our life and we start to see it in others' lives that we disciple, we're like, wow, this is what was, was meant to, for, you know, for, for our life to be around. Where healings are happening often, the handkerchiefs are brought uh, you know, to the disciples and they were praying and people were being you know, delivered. Uh, you know, the deaf are hearing, the eyes that are blind are now seeing, limbs are growing back, uh, you know, um, you know, cancer being removed, tumors, uh, these things, you know, this is... The, the, the normal Christian life. It shouldn't be something like, oh, well, I saw a miracle, uh, you know, seven years ago or nine years ago. No, I saw a miracle today and, and yesterday, and I'm going to see a miracle tomorrow. And that is that is the the, the, the works of, of, of the Lord. And I, I just want to say, let's keep praying into this. Let's keep trusting God. Let's keep, um, you know, um, just, yeah, don't, don't, don't go left, don't go right. Let's keep our eyes on the cross like flint. And understand that this is why we're alive, to be Christ-like, to be like Jesus. The same spirit that Jesus had, uh, you know, he gave us the same spirit. Not, not a little measure of, of a little spirit, but the same Holy Spirit that Jesus has. Here we are. It can, it can reside in me and in, in you. And that's exciting. Let's celebrate about this. Amen. Praise the mm -hmm. Lord. Do you want yeah. to finish off with prayer, Lana, and then we'll just, yeah, yeah, thank you. Sure. If anyone else feels led to pray as well, go for it. But, Father, I just thank you, Lord, that, you. Um, yeah, we've come into a new wineskin season, Father. Yeah, there's a new wine being poured out for this new wineskin, Father God, and we can't do things the way that we've always done it because we're going to get the same old results that's not really effective. Father, I thank you, God, that you are um, putting this burden on, on our hearts, but also on many, many people's hearts, Lord Jesus. Father, that our life is over in a twinkling of an eye. Lord, even as this morning I went to a funeral today, Father God, and so, saw so many people grieving over this beautiful man. And Lord, I know that, um, Father, that you want us to always um, be mindful about this, God, that we're here on the earth for such a short time, so we need to be effective with the time that we have while we're here on the earth. And we want to see many people at the end of their life coming into your loving arms and being reconciled to you, Father God, and not being um, separated from you for all eternity, God. I thank you for my brothers and sisters that are here on this meeting tonight and even the ones that came in person last night, Father. Thank you for the calling that you have upon their lives, Lord. Thank you that you've got, a, you've put a burden inside of them, Father. Lord, for this, for the work of um, that's in the harvest, for souls to come into the kingdom, God. Otherwise, why, why would you even bother coming to this meetings? But Father, I thank you, Lord, that this is a desire that you've put in each and every one of us and i pray lord um for um yeah that you will just open up um doors um that give us opportunities more and more to go into the harvest because i know that it's hard lord when you have commitments to you know to full-time work or running businesses or uh, running ministries father sometimes it feels like it's really hard but lord i just pray that you give us that um that opportunity to go into the harvest i pray lord just a blessing mm -hmm. over uh, everyone's families, Lord Jesus, and um, yeah, that we would all 
um, move into what you're moving into, God, mm. that we would move into that new wineskin season and that we will not be afraid, but we'll be full of faith and full of Thank expectation. You, Just like John said, um, this is going to be what you're doing, God. This is what you're doing and you will make a way mm. where there is no way. And you did say in Isaiah 43, 18 to 19, behold, I'm about to do something new. Mm. Do you not perceive it? Do you not see it? I am making a way in the wilderness and rivers of Amen. living waters is going to flow through the wastelands. And we thank you for these rivers of living thank waters God. that is going to flow through the wastelands of our nation, of Australia, and even of Kenya, and even of Uganda mm. and India and different parts of the world, God. Father, that, um, yeah, people are going to come into the living waters, Father, uh, across this nation. But it takes an army of people mm. to go out into the highways and the byways to preach the gospel because how will they hear the message of the good news if there isn't a messenger to proclaim the good news so i thank you that you've given us lord jesus this mandate and i thank you that you've given us the boldness and the courage and i thank you that you've given us tools and equipped us to be able to do this work Amen. and i thank you father god that it's your holy spirit that enables us i bless every person i bless this new season i thank you that you go before us and that we are following after you in jesus name amen awesome does anyone else would like to pray as well um anyone else if you feel led to want to really pray as well you're welcome to before we close the meeting this Ooh. night yeah yeah i will father i just pray for your blessing over cornelia and salute saluta and Father, I just thank you. I, I just prophetically saw that you had your hand upon them. You can hear me? Yes. Am I connected? Okay, yeah. Yes. Lord, I physically, I heard you say that I will take care of this couple, and I know you will. And so, Father, I thank you for your anointing over them. I thank you for your angels around them, Father. Thank you that you are the commander of the armies of heaven. And, Lord, your angels are going to take this couple. You're going to, they're going to use this couple. They're going to draw thousands and thousands of souls um, to this couple and to others around them for discipleship, Lord, around Australia and even over into the islands and other parts of um, this world. And so, we, Lord, I thank you for their vision. Protect them from the enemy and thank you, Lord, that they know that what you have called them to, that they uh, will go forward and you will make a way. And, Lord, this is a new day and a new hour for Australia, which is the great south land of the Holy Spirit and nothing else and nothing short. And I thank you, Lord, that there is revival, even now started in this nation, Father, because so many have already confirmed that. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Mm. Amen. Mm. Amen. The Lord. Yeah, I just want to say something. Um, yeah, like I was praying like two weeks ago, um, like about where to tithe because I felt like the Lord was telling me that I was just doing it religiously, like mm. you know, just just keep on doing it here, here, here. And I sat in prayer and I said, Lord, where do you want me to um tithe to now? Mm. And it's just yeah, and <laughs> it was pretty cool. Like you know, he's led me to here, like into yeah. The, yeah, in, yeah, into your ministry. Um, Salad and Cornelius, yeah, like you know, it's good. good prayer. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Great soil. Brother Solomon. Awesome. Beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for everyone tonight. And I really appreciate you. We love you guys. And I look forward to, you know, to seeing you up ahead as well. I'm sure we're, we're not going anywhere just yet. We've got a mission to accomplish. But thank you for tonight. Thank you yes, for thank your, you. your hearts and your time uh, to be able to be here with us and share our heart with you. Yes, we really amen. appreciate you. Yeah, amen. And I'm just uh, just off the cuff, but I think we might do a follow-up sort of video call and maybe in January, beginning of next year, and just let you know, like, where where we're at and um, testify of, yeah, where, where we are then compared to, to now and, mm. um, yeah, the plans that the Lord has up ahead, um, yeah, the concrete plans, I guess, for different, um, yeah, areas of this nation. So, yeah, we'll do a follow-up um, video is what I'm saying. Awesome. Mm. 
All right, love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your evening with your families and wherever you got to go. And thanks again for tonight. Brother Joel, thank you. And uh, Sister Glennis. Um, yeah, thank you, Zoe and Sister. Thank you, guys. Uh, God bless everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Brother, thank you. Brother, Brother, Brother Solomon. Yeah. Have a good night. Keep you, your, keep you in your pre our prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bless you, Glennis. Love you. Love you.